In this video you will learn how to render nicer looking metal shaders. For this we will learn how to use environment overrides to improve boring looking reflections that often can occur in studio lighting setups. So in this scene I built a very simple lighting setup to render this lamp object and overall I think I'm happy with the result but there's one part here in particular which I don't like at all and that is this metallic frame here of this light and the reason why I don't really like it is because it looks very flat and undefined you can't really read it very well as metal and it's just gray and boring. So what I did is that I tweaked this metallic shader here as you can see without affecting any of the other parts of my image. So I don't really have to change my lighting setup. I can just tackle this one part here of the image which I don't like. And that's a very nice little trick in V-Ray that allows you to do that. And that's exactly what we're gonna be discussing in this video in here. And as always, you can have full access to all of my scene files over on my Patreon. You can also watch a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies if that's interesting for you. But now without any further ado, let's just jump in and see how this was done. So in my slate material editor, I loaded already the shader, which is responsible for this metal frame. But instead of using that, I want to just start with a new material because that shows us quite easy what I want to demonstrate in here. So let's just add this new material. And for this one, I want to keep the diffuse color completely at black. And then let's increase the reflection all the way to white. And then let's also disable Fresnel reflection so that we just have 100% full reflectivity across our whole surface. And now we can just apply that here to our metal frame and see what kind of result we will get. So you can see we kind of get the same result as before. We just have this kind of flat looking metallic shader which is reflecting our whole environment that we set up. And this environment doesn't really look very interesting and that's why we have this kind of flat appearance. But down here in the shader we have the option to override our environment. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next step. So let's add, for example, a simple V-Ray color inside here. And let's give this a very red color tone so that we know exactly where our environment will be placed. And let's now connect that here into the environment slot of our shader and see what kind of result we are getting. So as you can see, our environment now has been replaced with this red color tone. And only for this shader, everything else is basically unaffected. And that's quite nice that we have this option here in this shader. So if we scroll up here in the reflection tab, we have certain kind of options to define how we want this environment here to blend into the shader. And we can use this dim distance parameter for that. So by default, this here is switched off. And that means it will only replace basically infinitely far away things. So here, for example, I have this environment map set up and this will be replaced because that's not really a 3d object in our scene so to speak but every 3d object here will be still considered and this we can change with this dim distance parameter so for example if we enable this the default is 100 centimeters so let's go down to let's say for example one centimeter and now you can see that we're basically replacing a lot more things in our scene with this environment Let's use, for example, 1.5. And you can see we have this very harsh blending that is happening now between our environment and things that we actually reflect here. And we can choose the blending that's happening here with the dim fall of parameters. Let's use, for example, 0.25. You can see we have a much nicer blending now happening. And this parameter goes all the way up to one. So we have a very smooth transition here. Let's use, for example, 0.25. And then let's use a dim distance of, for example, 10 centimeters. So that basically we're only replacing the environment on those outside parts in here. But inside we still have the full reflection here of our light. And this makes it look much more realistic, I think. If you choose, for example, a dim distance of zero, that means that this material just only reflects the environment. It doesn't reflect itself or anything else. It just fully reflects here this environment, similar like maybe a reflection map in some game engines back in the days. So you can play with this parameter whatever fits you. So in the scene, I would say, let's say, for example, 10 centimeters. And like this, we can kind of get a good balance. 
So now you might wonder how we can use that. That looks really horrible. And of course, we're not going to be using this red color here to replace our environment, but we're going to be using an HDRI. So this one here is just to pre-visualize basically what part we're going to be replacing. And now let's add here a simple V-Ray bitmap. And let's load, for example, here this studio lighting HDRI into the V-Ray bitmap. And let's now connect this one here into the environment of our shader. So as you can see, when we do that, we don't really get the result that you may be expected because everything still looks extremely flat. And the reason for that is that here, the mapping type is set to 3ds Max standard. So this is if you would apply it to a geometry with some UV coordinates and so on. But here we want to use this as an environment. And then we have to use the spherical mapping type. And once we do this, you can see that now here our HDI reflects in our metal. So now we can go in and define the placement of our HDI here with this horizontal and vertical rotation. We can also flip it horizontally, which I'm going to do now. Let's use, for example, a horizontal rotation of 90 degrees. And I think like this, I like it because we have this kind of like smooth gradient here on this part and some nice reflections on those parts. But as you can see, we have some weird colors which are appearing and that's because here our HDI has this kind of weird color tones inside. So we can go inside and use, for example, a simple 3ds Max color correction and connect this inside here and then connect this back into our environment. And then inside, we can choose, for example, to desaturate our HDI. So you can see the color tones now disappear. And if we want to, we can even go in and play with a gamma, for example. Let's use a gamma of 0.8. And like this, we can get a bit more contrast here into our environment map. So now let's clean up and delete here this red color. We don't really need that anymore. And let's go back to our original shader that I built here that has some roughness and bump variation. So let's apply this now to our metallic frame again. And now we have to go in and copy the same settings that we had in here. So let's use a dim distance of 10 and dim fall off of 0.25. So dim distance of 10 and dim fall off of 0.25. Now we can also go in and pipe this one here into the environment part of this shader. And as soon as we do this, you can see we have kind of the same result that we had before, just now with this shader that has a bit more detail here for the bump mapping and some roughness variation. So this of course also helps us to make the shader look a bit more nice and realistic. So again, this dim distance parameter here defines the blending that's happening. You can see now we have the real reflection of the light source. But if I go lower with this parameter, for example, to one centimeter, then this will disappear because we will flip to our environment here much more early. We don't really have our accurate reflections on those inside part anymore. So the higher we go with this value, the more of the original reflections here is maintained. And if we go back to 10 centimeters, then basically whatever is in 10 centimeter range will also be reflected and considered. And only then we will switch to our environment. So I hope with this video I was able to show you that this technique can be quite useful to modify the appearance of certain shaders in your scene without overall adjusting your lighting setup. And this can be quite beneficial, especially for some studio lighting setups that oftentimes have a very simplistic environment. And like this way, you can still make your metals look quite realistic. As always, you can have full access to all of my scene files for all of my tutorials on my Patreon if you want to try that out by yourself. And also offers you a full course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies. So check that out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.